my glaciers were not always disappearing. At one time, they covered the land. As temperatures rose, the glaciers a half mile thick melted and receded northward. They scoured the bedrock, grinding it into the deepest topsoil in the world. When the melting stopped, the deep basins were filled with glacial meltwater, earthing the Great Lakes. The rich soils and fresh water of the region provide us with a place to call home. The native Anishinaabe first called this place home. They respected the water and the earth, grateful to receive my gifts. Water is my lifeblood. It flows through me and my children, purifying and nourishing all life on earth. Inspired by the water, Carl Reiske, Jared Van Oort, Ryan Bush, and Drew Etling set out to kayak the entirety of Lake Superior's shoreline, hoping their journey would bring a voice to the water and inspire others who call the Great Lakes home. As they paddled, connecting with the communities, their love and understanding of our freshwater life sources deepened. In our ever-evolving environment, there is a dire need to protect our water more than ever. With hundreds of miles ahead, the story of four friends paddling towards cleaner water starts here in Marquette, Michigan. Hey, Hi. what's going on today? Whew. Well, today has been a long time coming. We've been planning for nine months now, and the four of us are circumnavigating Lake Superior via kayak trying to do about 25 miles a day, uh, the four of us, and uh, meeting with as many people as possible, uh, promoting awareness of water quality issues in the Great Lakes region. What do you got to say about the guys you're traveling with? <laughs> They're great guys. We get along uh, very well for now. Uh, I'm sure that'll change. We'll probably get sick of each other. But with everyone's background, I think our team is pretty ideal. How are you feeling today? I, I know you, so I can just see you're a little nervous. I am. I am a, a teeny bit, but we're ready. We're smiling. We're all, we're ready to rumble. What's it taking to get to this point? A lot of preparation. For safety. You give me a half of one. Watch over. I'm not going to pull them all. I'm not going to be able to. At least 20 bags short. We got Pepper. I'll be the Pepper, Pepper Man. Pepper Man. Pepper Man. Pepper Man. What do you hope you personally get out of this? Ah oh, man, just like, just an awesome experience. Really, just kind of learn a little bit about myself, and you know, it's been a transitional period in my life. Getting ready to graduate college, just. You know, just kind of help motivate and give a little clarity for the next few steps to come in life. I want to be as sustainable as possible, picking mushrooms, foraging berries, uh, and eating fresh fish, just living off the land, being sustainable. <laughs> so at first it was recreational. Uh, it was for personal pleasure, paddling around. Uh, having a cause behind it is very important. We want to educate the people on what the problems are and how we can fix them and kind of show how people are affected by it directly. Working with the watershed goes hand in hand. Uh, if you can avoid wearing synthetic clothing, like fleece while you do it, that's great. Um, but if you, if you can, just kind of make a note of what you're wearing in case, you know. Because things like fleece are one of the big, yeah. big contributors to microplastics. Um, so rinse your hands and arms in the water. Uh, rinse each bottle and cap. So I've already pre-rinsed this rinse three times and then keep them closed until you sample. So they're, they're ready to roll, okay. um, but before you sample, you just kind of want to rinse them and then um, dump it downstream. I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors and all the people that have supported us thus far. It really got us to where we are and the support is unreal. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you for everything. Everything has been pieced together, hard work, dedication, getting there, nine months of planning. We appreciate all the support and love from the community, from our parents, friends, families, surrounding communities, the Great Lakes region itself. So thank you. 
Stop using single-use items. Yeah! yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful. All right. What do you pledge right here? Pledge to spread awareness. Ooh. Yes! Oh, Eliza, what did you do? What do you think of this adventure? I think it's pretty amazing that these guys are willing to take on a feat that is very worthy of cause and very helpful to everybody in this area. To bring awareness is probably the most important thing right now. If you could have, like, a wish for them, what would that wish be? Good learning experience and hopefully they can pinpoint all the areas they're trying to expose that is not so good in the lake and bring awareness to that. We lay down in the grass in a nest of sleeping bags breathing in the shallow canyon air The water 45 degrees We wade out to the knees And soak to the sleeves in a semi-aquatic prayer Great state, what state am I in? Encompass roses bloom again Home of the water, Canada's daughter Again and again and again and again and again Michigan and again and again and again and again While we were plotting the trip, we wanted to contribute as much as we could to the community of people working to protect the Great Lakes. However, we are limited by our mode of transportation. With help from the Superior Watershed Partnership and the Adventure Scientist, we decided to take water samples from around the lake shore to test for microplastics. The main focus right now is to find a routine and be consistent, whether it's a task such as preparing food or setting up camp. We don't have everything quite figured out yet, and that's okay. But as time goes on and we can't find that rhythm, we may be in trouble. What do you gotta do? Well, I have to inquire in Munising, talk to the local fishermen, uh, get some advice on uh, what the fish are biting, because thus far, uh, I've only saw one fish come up to my lure that was interested and that was way back at the Carp River. So uh, today's one of those days where hopefully I'll learn about what I'm doing wrong, what I could uh, improve on. It's been almost a year since we've seen Benny. Learning from our encounters with the people that surround themselves around the lake can only help us in the months to come. So Ben, how long have you been fishing uh, with the net out here? 27 years, right? 27 years. Has there been better years and then slower years? They're or is all it pretty about the same? All about the same, pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. As we're coming out to uh, the net today, what do you kind of expect uh, we're pulling out of the water? Ten fish. Ten fish. Ten trout. Okay. Ten. Suckers. Ten trout, ten suckers. I hope we have more than that because anything after what you predict goes to us, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. You don't want them? No. You guys might as well eat them. All right, Ben. We're gonna break down camp and continue. All right. Thank you so See much. See you later. You guys have you. fun, eh? Hey. Take it easy. Be safe it, out there too. Yeah, here. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Be safe. We will. Get out of here.
<laughs> oh, baby! Hey. Good morning, son. Yeah, baby. Got some. Are those from Benny Boys or are those yours? Benny Boys. <laughs> <laughs> and Pictured Rocks is the most familiar section of the lakeshore thus far. It is here where our passion and love for the lake emerged. It was nice having Ian, a fellow guide and good friend, join us in this place that we paddled so many times before. Our skills and knowledge developed over the years guiding in this area, as did our curiosity for what the rest of the lakeshore might hold. Drew, where are we? North Beach of Grand Island. Um, just had, got hit by a good rainstorm. <laughs> and uh, it's let up and we're taking a break. Great fun. Well, this uh, fantastic man named Steve let us, left us a little note upon purchase of four pasties for our paddle today. It says, paid for, we'll pick up tomorrow, or asked if we could resale them for a refund. Steve. Four paddlers never came. But guess what? We showed up. Now we're eating good. Yep. Um, so, this is our brand new North Face Stormbreaker 3 from Moose Shaw a local outfitter here in the Michigan State. As you can see, we've got three X-Pad Sinmat 3Ds, 2.8 widths that are uh, a little bit large for this tent, but it'll accommodate. Um, this is a three-man tent. We're making it sleep five tonight. Uh, it could be a little bit nipplier, so we think that five men will do the trick. Um, as the Aborigines would say, uh, a three-dog night is a cold, cold, cold night. Um, and tonight is a five-man night, so it's going to be a cold night. And uh, we just paddled through a lot of wetness for about 20 miles today. So Ian's wearing underwear on his face, and uh, he's pretty tired. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Campground is infested with bugs. I had to uh, make shift my underwear into my, uh, into my fly mask. Uh, these are what I was wearing all day today, so uh, the smell is there. I think that's helping with the flies. Um, as you can see, we got a nice fire started. Paying down for the fire. Oh, yes. So we're working yeah, with but... some smoked trout. Uh, we just got our tortillas in. Uh, we have some rice and beans and peas on the, on the grill right now, and we'll have fish tacos for the evening. bottom line is we still have a pretty pristine environment and I think a lot of cases in the UP we are finding the problems early enough that you know just giving it a little help actually keeps things in balance. Um, the key sometimes is to look at what happens in other places like downstate right. and realize what happens if you don't get on the stick. Everything's interconnected you know um, so I would love to see more attention paid to invasive species that can really cause, uh, you know, huge cascades of effects throughout not just the water, but, you know, the air and everything else. Um, I would also really love to see more attention paid to possible chemical contamination. You know, I'll go on the record and say line five needs to be shut down, period. I would love to just raise awareness of how much we have to lose and how a little bit of action early on mm -hmm. can really save you a lot of money later on.
Well, hey there. Uh, my name is Miles Glendening. I'm kayak operations manager for Uncle Ducky Outdoors. Uh, we do guided tours along pictured rocks here. Best part about this job is getting people out, showing them, showing them the park, showing them the lake, uh, getting them to care a little bit more for the park, its ecosystem, uh, and really just the majesty and power of Lake Superior. Uh, I feel like once you get people out so they have a chance to experience uh, the lake, then they have a little bit more respect for it. Uh, not only respect for the power of the lake, but also for the beauty and, and cleanliness of the lake as well. Uh, you got to get people somehow attached uh, to their environment for them to actually care about it. So I feel getting people out so that they can paddle here uh, is kind of the best way to spread that knowledge to them to get them to care about it. All right, get you Gumi. We thank you for safe travels and calm water so far. We offer you Samak for continuous safe travels. Fire. <laughs> Female American goldfinch lacks streaks in his white bars. Female house finch has streaked chest. Idaho is only about 75 miles across of the panhandle and I have a place to sleep each night. What's going on here today? All right, well, I'm Gary Palmer. I'm the spring migration hawk counter here at Whitefish Point Bird Observatory. And well, today's May 30th, and I've been out here every day for eight hours since March 15th, uh, back when there was like four feet of snow on the ground here. And this is actually a project that's been ongoing. This is the 40th season of data collection here. Uh, it turns out Whitefish Point is a really excellent spot to watch birds, and in particular, uh, raptors, so hawks, Vultures, eagles, falcons, kites, things like that. I started watching birds about eight years ago. My very first bird watching trip was right here to Whitefish Point and the shorelines of the Great Lakes uh, really make for some of the best bird watching in the entire world. And so we really are have a special, special place here. And um, you know, this spot here is such a special and important refuge for so many birds when they're on their yearly journeys that I don't think many people really realize just how crucial little places like this can be to big populations of animals and people. And I just love that I get paid to stand out here 11 weeks a year staring at the lake and staring at the forest and just documenting what the birds are doing around me. We're trying to, uh, we're making a rice patty cake and uh, inside these rice and bean patties is a little bit of cheese. And uh, the breading isn't optimal, but it looks like it's holding together fair enough. It's not gonna be a crispy breading. It's more gonna be like an oil soaked cake, but uh, <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Yeah, boy. That turned out great.
Look at the trees and the grass and the bushes. He says, they all have their own music too. They get it from the earth. And all the animals, deer, bear, all the birds and the fish, they have their own music too. They get it from the universe. And he says, and you have your music and I have my music. And whenever we do work, the music in you goes into the work that you do. Colonists came. They were a sick and lost people. And they still are, many of them. They still cling to the fear that they, they learned They're over there. The church tried to make them into slaves for the church. And in order to do that, they had to destroy every connection they had to the earth. And then by the time they came over here, they'd gone through that for a thousand years. And when you don't have that connection, you don't have that confidence. All you have is fear, fear of everything. The sun is, comes every day to perpetuate life. That's what we're supposed to be here for. And when we came across from the other side, we came across to be medicine in the medicine wheel. We were sent to the garden to help it. But what happens today is we're sent to a corrupted world and they take us and they put us in a box and they feed us poison and they teach us lies until we don't have any sense of what is and what isn't. And by that time we're grown and they tell us now you can leave, you're free. And we get outside of the box and we look around us, we don't have any relationship to the garden at all. So we turn around and we struggle to get back in the box. And that's the kind of trouble that we're in. We have to wake up and become the medicine. And if we don't do that, then we're going to go the way of the box. It's a dark future. Well, good to meet you guys. I, I like what you're doing, taking a trip around the lakes. Um, I hope that you have in mind, you know, the, the dire threat that hangs over these lakes. And it's time to wake up. So yeah, we just had a solid uh, 15 degree temperature drop. Uh, you know, the wind started blowing super hard. We got the road right next to us. I'm really worried about all those guys out there. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna, if they're gonna be able to handle themselves. Uh, luckily, got revitalized by some 49 cent uh, watermelon sours. And feeling, feeling pretty alive right now. A little open down here though. A little open down there. Maybe I should do something about that. Alright. Well, about to hit shore. So, uh, check him out. The Great Lakes are very peculiar, again, uh, weather wise compared to salt water. Um, it doesn't take as much wind to start making waves in fresh water because the water itself isn't as dense as salt water. So we can get. Uh, some pretty severe waves and storms, uh, not the biggest amount of wind. Fog is definitely an issue up here since uh, it is a uh, river and a canal. It's a controlled waterway. So um, if, the, if the visibility drops to a certain level, the Coast Guard is going to say, okay, the river's closed and uh, everything goes to anchor. And the Corps of Engineers doesn't want anybody going to anchor too close to the locks because the anchors will tear up the, the canal bottom. But we do get storms coming in from the northwest. We call them Alberta Clippers because there's really nothing to stop a storm from the Rocky Mountains coming across the Great Plains of Canada and hitting Lake Superior. Uh, they can come barreling out of the west and northwest with just a speed and intensity that's literally awe-inspiring. Uh, I've been out on a few on a thousand footers and um, even, and even on a thousand foot ship, you can definitely feel the waves and it's a little unnerving to watch waves break over the bow of a thousand foot ship and just walk down the deck and smack into the building at the end.
Easy Carl, no wake sound. Well, I would say you could easily make the argument that uh, Lake Superior is the most important freshwater resource in the United States. In fact, you might argue it's one of the most, if not the most, important freshwater resource in the entire world. So the effect it has on, you know, quality of life, economics, uh, and the ability of the environment to continue to provide resources for society to use, uh, that effect is, is really, really dramatic in terms of the resources in this region. I would say that I think most people in society in the United States today are blissfully unaware of how much society has changed in the last 100 to 200 years and how those changes, including population growth and economic development and growth of technology, how they've impacted the environment in all sorts of different ways. Some of those impacts have been positive, but a lot of them have been negative. And so that's our real challenge is to get people aware and then uh, involve them in the decision-making processes so that when we make decisions about how we're going to interact with the world that we can make really sound ones. For the last 250 miles and 18 days we've been paddling as a group of four. This morning I found out I'd not be getting into Canada with the guys. My remote area border crossing permit was turned down. It was hard news to hear and it's gonna be even harder to tell them. I still haven't found the right time, but I know that they'll continue around the lake without me where I'll be waiting on the other side. It's not my time to see the North Shore. Not right now, not for me. Are you having second thoughts of even coming out and being on some of the west shore? Mm, no. Whether it's if you really are not, if it's really not going well solo, like would you get driven out there if that's the case? Yeah, I mean, like, you need, you, try, yeah. like you need to finish yeah. the trip. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. without a question. This, is, this can't be the end. No, no. This is not the end. No, no. Because we started four dudes on Superior. Uh, I know. And it needs to end I with know. four dudes on Superior. On Superior. If not, I hope I'm in it. <laughs> 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 It was a good first part, and no saying the second part's gonna be bad because it's just gonna be new, it's gonna be different, whole new experience for all four of us. And uh, we'll just have to catch up on part number three, you know? Oh, yeah. We'll have a lot to look forward to, so that'll be, that'll be awesome. We're only gonna get back together here shortly, so. Trying not to think too hard about it, just looking forward to when we meet up again for all the right reasons. Did you know when I'm paddling with my eyes closed in a straight stretch of beach, and I'm just paddling with my eyes closed because the beach is so straight and I've been down it already, <laughs> I'm gonna be going to right where you guys are, going in between these big black rocks covered with some beautiful lichen. Carl. Yeah. Love you, man. Glad I could sleep yeah. in the tent with you last night. One night. Yep. One night. <laughs> I'll beat you guys there. I'll be yeah, set up. Yeah. We had to accept that it wasn't his time to complete the loop. Today's a really hard day. Um, it was even more challenging to accept the fact that we were going to continue without Drew uh, around the big lake. You keep that heart strong and um, paddle hard, buddy.
One month into the trip, looking back, uh, we've had great weather, we've had a lot of great people, had one storm that got us a little, little excited, you know, blew over the tents, and you know, makes everything a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more fun. And we've come about 460 miles. As we paddled through the Lake Superior Provincial Park, it's truly spectacular. Then we got here to uh, Michibacatan and or Wawa at NSA, National Superior Adventures. And after talking to Brandon, Jake, and all the other guides, that was just a tease and it just only gets better from here. And this is like what we've been waiting for. not knowing how long it will be until our package arrives from Marquette, uh, our first parcel that should be delivered with food to sustain us throughout Canada. We thought it would be about four or five days until the package arrived. Five days later we're still here in Wawa awaiting the package to the point where we decided to make some phone calls and learned that it might even take up to six to eight weeks. Ryan made a phone call and decided to make contact with the First Nation. We had this amazing experience. We found out there was a water ceremony in the morning. We didn't really know what to expect, what we were walking into. We took a seat around the fire, and right off the bat, we were introduced to what was going on. Just a, a blessing towards the water. Uh, the sema, the tobacco that they were smoking, is something very well cherished. It's a sign of respect to, to the water in this sense. Hello. Hi. How are you? I said, would you like somebody just to come barge in your home without knocking? And they right. said, no. And I said, then you show them some respect. I said, I offer tobacco. Yeah, I've been in very, very uh, emotional in the last couple of days because it has a lot to do with water. You know, that the development that the mines and what they're doing to the water and destroying lakes and it hurts, it hurts, it hurts me here. But I'm finding more, I find more strength when, I, when I'm doing ceremony that I need those ceremonies to help me. <laughs> Just to share, you know, my, my appreciation for you fellas showing up this morning. You know, because when we look at balance, you know, we need that male and female. And a lot of times our youth, males are, have a different journey. So the more, the more they see that there is that balance with male and female in doing ceremony or in doing anything, you know, to do it together. And, and it builds that strength to continue as, as people to look after Mother Earth and all that she offers us every day. So it's not just us as, as Anishinaabe people, it's, it's all of yous out there too, because we share this land together. Miigwech. Well, we finally got a package and some groceries, some candy bars. So we are packed up, ready to finally leave Wawa. It's been a great time, but there's a lot of lake ahead. Lots of wildlife in the area to look forward to. Uh, some great fishing. Hopefully we can get a treat one of these days. Here we are, we just came here with our semi to Mother Superior. Uh, wow, that was probably the uh, most effort I've ever tried to put into a time lapse. Right behind me, I had to scurry up that. I had to walk behind all that. And now we're back over here. Hope my food's ready. Oh, sure about it. Is it set out? Okay, I'm coming. So many miles between your heart and mine. 
so many miles left behind so many roads to unfold up ahead if you learn to keep your smile and you can't live without regret well, it's to a point they can't see it in your eyes you weary wandering soul it's growing tired up your case, it's time to travel once again through the fields that left you lonely and the devil's house of wind. As we know, the sun's energy is a powerful and important resource for all. With the use of solar panels, we were able to harness that energy to charge our main power bank, which charged our GPS, camera batteries, and the occasional cell phone. I was dependent on Bluebird days, but in some cases, the weather would turn, as did our availability to power. For 10 days straight, we didn't see the sun, which made it difficult to capture the beautiful shoreline of Puckasaw. Hey guys, I'm back. I gotta say, this is the craziest storm we've seen so far this trip. And, uh, the wind didn't allow me to go to the direction I wanted, so I had to bail for a sec. here enjoying the park and it's been just beautiful. Uh, in fact the other day we said it was a little too nice and I um, guess now we get the weather for that which is refreshing. It's good to change it up. You know the lake is known to be a little mysterious, a little spontaneous and uh, today we get to enjoy that a little bit. Just been waiting watching the thunder and lightning roll in and just kind of going to see what the weather has to do from here on out. It's been just beautiful, probably the most gorgeous part of Lake Superior thus far. The wind and the waves crashing all over me, and I want to know where the sunset goes. I want to be the sun of the sea. First shot of the of the trip, and I couldn't be more stoked. I decided five minutes ago to dip the line in the water because I wanted to go play in this bay. We're eating good tonight. So stoked. Yeah, let's get that fixed up. <laughs> Should I go for round two? Yeah. Today's catch me. After a short time on land, I began to feel out of place. I missed the guys and I missed the water. The water was calling back to me. I made a plan to head to the boundary waters with a canoe, a portage pack, and some maps. I found myself heading to northern Minnesota to paddle, and I felt like I finally had a purpose again. Yeah, baby. 
first rainbow. What a stretch. We made it. Uh, it was one of the most remote sections of the lake shore that I've ever experienced, that we all have experienced for that matter. And how intricate and how beautiful and just gorgeous the lake shore was from Wawa to now to where we are today. We are at the um, visitor center at Pakasal National Park uh, in Ontario. All right, so here we're gonna be sampling the water here in Peninsula Bay, just outside Marathon. And um, yeah, we're just gonna do it right outside of a city runoff uh, little stream that comes out here into the bay. Uh, this bay is known to have quite a bit of pollution. It's got uh, high levels of mercury and PCBs from the old paper mill uh, and other industries in the area. Um, but for us, we're testing microplastics in the water. Since microplastics are becoming a big issue, we actually drink them in most of our beverages that we drink uh, daily. So we're testing the water here around Lake Superior to see, see uh, what areas have the highest microplastics in the water. And um, we're still learning about the effects of it. We know that you know fish will be consuming microplastics and since people eat the fish, uh, it's going into our bodies through that. Uh, since we rely so much on the drinking water out here, uh, microplastics are in our water, they're in our beer, any other beverage that you're drinking that uses lake water. Uh, here we are, night one, and uh, I was just starting to cook dinner, and I burnt the tip of the MSR off. Oh no. <laughs> ah, cooking food is going to be interesting from now on. We will see if I try to light this bomb again or not. Split apart a banana, just like this. Uh, you prefer the green uh, <laughs> up on top with the browning at the bottom there. The ideal banana for the occasion. And oh, you gotta stuff them in, make sure they stay stuffed in. Oh yes, like of course. This. And oh. then wrap it. Wow. Oh yeah, otherwise, you know. What's, what's going on, boys? <laughs> what, explain what's uh, what's going on. Uh, we got the nice spot up here. It's naturally uh, sourced. It's, uh, Look at the bottom <laughs> source. Gotta fit two people, cause why waste water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So today we're actually traveling to the Slate Islands. Uh, I'm super excited for, for two reasons. One, we have a chance to see caribou. Two, I heard the fishing is great. Uh, as you can see, it's very foggy. Uh, so today is very essential to be using our GPS and our compasses. Uh, we know exactly where it is. We finally got sight of the Slate Islands for the first time uh, kind of late last night, which is kind of weird because we should have been seeing them for the past few days. Uh, now that we know where they are, we have a point of interest to where we'll cross and we're setting our compasses to 180 degrees south and full send in the fog. Yeah, so it's about a five and a half mile crossing. Uh, Jared, do you have any word on that? Uh, yeah, we're preparing for about two hours, uh, hour and a half, two hours of really just not being able to see anything at yeah, all. Yeah, so we'll see you at the slates uh, and if you see our boats, return them to us please. <laughs> or come find us. Or come find us. <laughs>
Harris, Harris Bay Beach. Just wanted the boys to see the epic wave, epic barrel, dude. This is right here on our own lake. This is Lake Superior. And that's a nice wave on our lake. It's day 11, I just portaged my six portage and uh, it was 120 rods, so basically a half mile. Um, that right there is the north boundary of the United States of America. This right here is Curtin Falls. So this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, you portage. Lake Superior got a hold of me 27 years ago, and I've been coming up here ever since. Uh, there was generally a group of six of us, and now we're down to two. Things happen, you get old. Whenever you see a river coming in, put your hand in it. If it's cold, I suggest you walk up that stream with the... Uh, you, you said you have some flies? I do. Some small ones? I have some small flies. Okay. And uh, smaller hooks, and you'll catch speckled trout. Yeah. Maybe the odd rainbow. You're going to go past here. Please do the outer side of this island. This is famous. This is where the CPR slip is. Yep, we'll be there. And along here yeah. is where my fishing spot is. You told me you're not going to tell me. <laughs> well, you. No, that's, that's broad. In the long here. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's not, not, not <laughs> for navigation purposes. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is one of the most fabulous places on the whole North Shore on the outer side of St. Ignace Island. My name's uh, David Tamlin. Uh, I'm the owner and operator of Superior Outfitters Coastal Kayaking Adventures. Uh, we've been in business now for uh, a little over 25 years. In the early days, there was a Rossport Island Management Group. It was a group of us locals who were interested in preserving the islands. There had been a threat of uh, this uh, five-star Belgian outfitting business opening up a, a lodge on, out on Simpson Island, and they were going to privatize the island, and that was going to bring an end to uh, our use of the island. And so the Rothbard Island Management Group was formed. For a number of years, we were uh, uh, advocating for uh, this area to be uh, protected. And uh, finally, with the formation of the National Marine Conservation Area, uh, we've received that protection. The uh, islands, as a result of that, have been uh, purchased by the uh, Nature Conservatory of Canada. I'm pleased to say that not only is the water protected, but uh, a lot of the uh, islands. So there are a lot of positive things are happening, but then a few years ago when we had the uh, boxcar spill into Lake Superior filled with the uh, plastic nurdles or the plastic pellets, suddenly they were washing up on the shorelines of uh, the islands nearby here. There were token efforts to clean up the, uh, the plastic pellets, but because uh, these islands are so isolated and it is long uh, tracks of wilderness, people don't see what's happening. you
fishermen. Uh, one is 19 and a half inches and the other one is 23. So a nice, uh, nice size fish. Shall be a good dinner tonight. After doing some island hopping the other day, uh, we decided, you know, CPR slip would be a good place to stop. Uh, right before the sunset we pull up and uh, there's three boats in there. Perfect company. We need someone new to talk to. Uh, there's Ron and uh, Carlo just standing on their vessels uh, welcoming us to uh, the CPR slip so that was a great place to have a steam bath a nice hot bath uh, kind of time to recuperate and uh, get a few things done around camp around our equipment that needed a little tender loving care Point Porphyry. It's uh, located a few miles from the city of Thunder Bay. This lighthouse uh, looks out over the water and it's a really beautiful, uh, beautiful view. And uh, it's always nice to host kayakers and canoers. We get a lot of, uh, lot of travelers coming through. And uh, well, uh, I think you're probably our 30th kayaker through this year. And we're expecting maybe another 50 in the next month. So. Um, what a what a great way to travel and see the uh, see the lake and and the experience. Uh, what a great journey you guys are on and uh, uh, a memory for a lifetime. So I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be fun, I'm sure already. What are we making, Jared? Peanut butter stew. Yeah. <laughs> peanut butter stew. Watery peanut butter. <laughs> and hopefully cinnamon may say that. Maybe more than that. Dude, honestly, if we like pan fry this, might be decent. And verdict is tastes like French toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're probably running pretty low on food all around. It's got us pretty excited to get into Thunder Bay, and it's got us feeling like we're on an expedition. You know, kind of uh, you know taking you out of your comfort zone and making you you know, really start to crave some things that you had all the time back home. And as soon as we uh, pass through Thunder Bay and get on to Pigeon Point, we'll finally reunite with our brother Drew and make our crossing to Isle Royal. Uh, we can't wait, it's been around 40 some days and you know, we can't wait to see our brother. Right though, still going. Guys over. Got a tree though. My name is Zach Cruzens and we're hanging out at the marina in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada on the Canadian North Shore Lake Superior. Best place in the world. <laughs> when I graduated, I did a trip with my friends. Uh, we spent 50 days paddling the Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area, mapping out uh, like campsites, uh, human impacts and uh, uh, like risk assessments of the of the area. So looking at we were looking at human impacts on like Arctic Alpine disjunct plant distribution, like in Heath communities on terrace beaches, uh, archaeological sites and points of interest, uh, and and how like that human history has affected uh, the way the lake is. And 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 through all these experiences, I interviewed people, I talked to people, I really got to know everyone that that loves and lives for the lake, and uh, that's what brings me back here. What it really comes down to. Because um, I go out into the area in the Canadian North Shore here, and and I kind of only the only people I see is people people I know, <laughs> which is crazy. And, and a lot of them are, are are getting getting up there in age, you know. And uh, 
there's this uh, there's a few younger people uh, like yourselves that are paddling around the lake and my friend uh, Will Stevens he's the son of uh, Jim Stevens who started the Nerviant Island Nation who made uh, St. Ignis Island and Archipelago of Islands a sovereign nation back in the 70s and trying to keep that dream alive they have a land use permit promoting the the idea of Nerivia and, and the enchanted islands that are out there and the, the magic and energy that is felt in this lake. And, and yeah, it's an amazing place, so much positive energy and opportunity for growth and I, I want to try to make this my home and, and, and uh, continue to love and live for the lake and everyone that's involved with it. So, so my name is Jim Bailey. I work here at Lake Indian University and I'm the Remedial Action Plan Coordinator for Great Lakes Areas of Concern on Lake Superior. And what we are working on is uh, cleanup and uh, environmental restoration at specific locations along the Canadian shore of, La of Lake Superior. So uh, it was brought to uh, our attention a few years ago these plastic uh, pieces, they're a couple, couple millimeters across, just, just pieces of plastic, uh, had, had been found on beaches on the Canadian side of Lake Superior. Uh, later we found out that the uh, actual name for these pieces of plastic is nurdles, and they are actually the raw material for all things uh, made out of plastic. In some locations, uh, they're thick enough that you can pick up a handful of these plastic beads. They're classified as a microplastic under Canadian federal legislation. Uh, but uh, we are getting more and more reports of wide distribution of these plastic nurdles on uh, beaches across eastern Lake Superior, both Canadian side and U.S. side. And we've carried out a, a few uh, cleanups in cooperation with uh, organizations like Parks Canada and volunteers from our region. Uh, and one of the things that, that has been made clear to us is that cleaning up simply isn't enough. And that we really need to get on this plastic issue. And it's not just these plastic beads. Uh, I mean, it's everything that is produced out of plastic. Um, long story short, we're, we're overdoing it on plastic big time. in the boundary waters on one of the lakes, uh, South Fowl. And I had a really good time. I really enjoyed this place. And I'm about to head up uh, and portage into the Pigeon River to uh, head down to Lake Superior and uh, do my grand portage. So, um, goodbye for now to the boundary waters. All in all, I double portaged uh, just because of some issues with uh, not having a canoe yoke. And I did about 50 miles on the portage trail with either my pack on my back or the canoe on my back. Uh, 30 lakes all in all, uh, 321 miles. If I didn't portage that day, I had three the next day. But I did 42 in 24 days, so about two a day at least and the eight and a half mile Grand Portage on the last day. And that took me all day. That was a 10 hour uh, on my feet with either the canoe or the pack on my back. And a total of 25 miles of portaging that day. Uh, I was scared to stop and, and rest my legs at all because I was scared they were going to cramp up. I finally saw Superior after being in a beautiful, beautiful land with amazing water and wildlife. Uh, there was a point where I was on the portage trail and I caught this breeze coming off Superior and I could smell it and I knew I was close and when I got there 
I was overwhelmed. Not only that I had made it that far, but I was overwhelmed to be in the place I was and to be next to this body of water that provides life for everyone and, and, and a lot more than that. You know, there really is no border. Those borders are imaginary lines on maps. Um, the water doesn't follow a border. Uh, the animals sure don't. And we share this water with everyone. So if any sort of conservation issues are really gonna come across in the future, we're gonna have to work together, not only state to state, community to community, but country to country. Uh, we share this water with everyone surrounding uh, the Great Lakes. The night before we reunited, I was like a kid on Christmas where you can't really sleep because uh, I was so excited to see the guys after being separated for 40 days or so. I got in my kayak for the first time since separating. I thought it was gonna be jammed and crammed because I'd been in a canoe, but it wasn't. I felt comfortable. I just got in my kayak for the first time in uh, 30 something days and I'm on my way to meet up with the guys. Uh, it's been a while and uh, we have a lot of catching up to do. So I'm really excited to see them and, and uh, give them a big old hug. I was paddling towards where our meetup spot was and I kept looking on the horizon line for little dots, little dots, and then there they were. And uh, so I was just paddling with just the biggest smile on my face. I first saw Jerry uh, and, and then Ryan and then Carl. That was an amazing moment and probably one of the best moments of my life. A lot of emotions came up. It made it that much sweeter. It's good to see you. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Together. Oh, water, man. <laughs> now we got Voyager in the crew. Yeah, dude. Uh, we're out here at Pigeon Point. I am finally back with the guys. And uh, we're making our way to Isle Royale today. And it is a beaut. Couldn't ask for a better day to do this. And uh, Perfect morning, baby. I'll take a cherry on top, please. We just want to say thank you and uh, wish us safe travels, a safe passage. Big wetch! Big wetch. Woo! Once we got to Isle Royale, it was just full of surprises. I wasn't really sure what to expect when we got here. And uh, one of the first things we did was we paddled up to a creek and there was five moose uh, munching down on some, some aquatic plants and we were just sitting there floating with them. Uh, you know, they would come out of the water and look at us after and munch on some grass and we were just sitting there watching and observe them and every day had a surprise. The next day was just as amazing. We get up, get up. Get that boat up there. Anything you have to say right now? Uh, earlier today, I was contemplating if I wanted you to shoot a little video of me uh, being a mediocre fisherman. Now I caught the biggest fish of my life, and uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to clean it right now. Um, definitely the biggest fish I've ever caught. I just want to say, instead of catching seven little ones, uh, one big one should feed uh, the four of us for a couple days at least. Don't worry, we'll get going. Shorten the day a little bit, that's for sure. So it's actually been an interesting journey for me in natural resources because I've um, 
Uh, I've worked for the National Forest Service all around the country, but it was a real honor to come back and take on the superintendency of this park in the middle of the lake. But uh, it was also a bit of a challenge too. So warming trends that we're going through right now uh, caused a, a major issue with our predator-prey relationship on the island between wolves and moose. And that's uh, been documented in one of the longest predator-prey studies in the world. We had an incident where somebody early on brought a dog, one of the earliest cases of um, canine parvovirus, which is uh, pretty deadly to pups and it really helped bring and crash our wolf population at that time. And the warming trends that are going on right now have also caused a, a major issue with how frequent our ice bridges have been to the islands. So uh, the wolves normal natural access to the island over an ice bridge hasn't been there. So that led us into a, a three-year study of really looking at um, island biogeography and uh, whether or not we should reinsert a major uh, predator species onto this island uh, for the prey that exists here, which is um, moose. And if you in your travels uh, were out at Michipicotin, you will have known there was a bit of a issue with wolves and caribou. They don't get along very well. Uh, fact is the uh, wolves have pretty well decimated them. But they're not 2,000 pounds with an ability to kick and, um, and take on their competitor. Out here the wolves have mainly preyed on kind of the young and the old and diseased moose. So they tend to keep the population healthier. They kind of dampen the swings of population that an ungulate like a moose will go through anyway. It's very easy to get distance from the realities of our world, and that world is what really supports us, you know. And, and to get people back out where they have the time to think, there's no interruptions because of the solitude and the quiet, gives them really a chance to reflect, I think, on what keeps us whole. A healthy earth is what keeps us whole, and I'm very proud to be one of the stewards of, you know, a very special place for that. These days gone by, well, I'm still sitting here. Look out my window, and I'll keep out the fear. I'm leaving and taking the route. I think water is life, and Lake Spear has 10% of all the water in the world, fresh water in the world, so it's life. It's a great lake, and everyone should get out and explore it and experience it, and I don't think there's a better way to do it than in a kayak. And Amy, you know, told me that she'd always wanted to kayak around Lake Superior, and I, you know, I sort of was like, well, you should find someone to do it with, because I'm sure as you guys would attest, it's more fun to do things like this with other people. So by the end of the summer, I was trying to convince her, well, you know, you should paddle around Lake Superior with me. So we spent the winter planning and we took off the next next fall and spent two months kayaking around the lake. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just an amazing body of water and a lot of wild stretches of coastline. And, you know, we just drank the water right out of the lake basically the whole way around. It really set us on a whole new path in life to try and um, educate people about places like Lake Superior and the Boundary Waters and and also try to inspire people to spend more time outside and, you know, live an adventurous life. We did it in the fall because school children were following the lawn. So we were updating 
a website with blog posts and podcasts and daily data and all sorts of information for elementary and middle school students to, to follow, participate in the journey. protect what we love and we love what we begin to understand and the more we understand the more we're overwhelmed with awe about this place. I'm Nancy Langston. I'm a professor at Michigan Technological University and I study climate history and Lake Superior and my research looks at how Lake Superior has changed over time and what our future choices are if we want to sustain its quality. So blue-green algae um, is natural, it's part of nature, but we have never really seen it in Lake Superior before because Lake Superior is too cold to support these big blooms of blue-green algae. So the fact that we're seeing it suggests that this is a real wake-up call to do something about this lake. We have an opportunity to do that. We have a window where we still have time to slow some of the worst effects. One of these days, we choose to set free. Backs are all broke, they help us to see. Fall short enough, El Dorado inside. Sitting and searching, big and dark for the light. Wisconsin water Rain down on me Wash away last night Let me be a little bit of 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 Cross my body and turns dark as the cold. What's up, Ryder?
in water Rain down on me Wash away last night Let me be clean We're at the tra Lake Superior Traditional Ways Gathering. This is our 15th annual. We actually couldn't think of anywhere else we'd want to be. This is the spot. This is the only place that this gathering feels like it, it can be or should be or needs to be. We have a lot of people that show up here who are into craft, earth skills, traditional skills, and we have anywhere from 40 to 50 instructors on site that come from across the United States and their families, and we have a lot of participants that come from all over as well. What we do are all kinds of earth-based skills, not just from Ojibwe or Anishinaabe territory or culture. It's about sharing everything from around the world. Some of the skills that are being shared about basketry, using different materials, flint napping, arrow making, bow making, cooking over fire, wild edibles, fermentation. There's so many things to learn and to share. So I just really care about the water. And you know, Anishinaabe culture tells us that, shares with us that women are the keepers of the water. They are the protectors of the water. And so there's teachings around that. Back in um, 2000, we took a journey around Lake Superior. It was called the Walk to Remember. And I was on that journey for about 32 days while walking with my two children, ages three and one, because I really cared about the water and I really wanted to like, I didn't, I didn't think that that was like a hindrance, having children. I wanted them to be in touch with their intuition and with the environment. And so it's like, well, of course we're gonna go on this journey because you're gonna see so much even if you're so young. The journey itself ended after around day 56 because there was about three days of ceremony at the end. We all had messages that we brought to the fire, we brought to communities. It was really about environmental degradation. That's why we were walking around the lake, was to draw attention to the communities. I want my actions to speak louder than my words and I think being a part of this gathering they're speaking loud because we're continuing the craft you'll know how to make a fire you'll know how to tan a hide to make some clothing you'll know how to catch a fish with a spear or whatever you know whatever it is I mean all of this for me is a part of the prophecy it's a part of the new people so if you're familiar with that then you'll know why this gathering is so important to me and why I'm involved in it And tonight it is <laughs> <laughs> the last supper. Dun dun dun. Now you cook cornbread without losing a finger. Is that perfect? Carl, mm -hmm. being a chef for 
101 days, just bought a meal. Being able to catch fish on that North Shore every day and cleaning them every day, it just became second nature. The pot ends right here and the pasta comes up to over here, which means not all of it is being cooked at the same time. Therefore, you have to stir it up and try to make it happen. But guess what? Texture, crunch, that's what the dish is all about. <laughs> right there. Right. The rest is easy, So, we just had last supper and this is the last sunset. Wow, where did the time go? Where did the time go? Sad, all the energy has been released as we paddled around this beautiful, beautiful lake. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say other than big wedge. As they paddled the final miles, they reflected on the memories and the people connected by the stretches of water. Those experiences shared with others remind us who we are and where we call home. The water is shared by all of us surrounding the Great Lakes. Will you remember my glaciers? Will you remember the chill of the water as you jumped in? Will you remember the dance of my waves bound for shore? Will you remember the touch of the soft, cold sand beneath your toes? Will you remember the native Anishinaabe? Remember the look on your child's face when they caught their first fish? Will you remember your brothers and sisters across the lake? One, one more time, boys. One more time. We need the water, just as the water needs us. This is our water.
Face inside my head 